Our next game, the Falcons take care of business. The uh, division rival, the Bucks, 31-26. Jay, an efficient day for Kirk Cousins as he throws four touchdowns, completes 23 of 29 passes. Kyle Pitts, the big beneficiary of that. Yeah, I don't know how many people have had nine touchdowns against one opponent in a single season, but Kirk Cousins, I mean, if he can just play the Bucs secondary every week, uh, he he's would the, be QB He's like one. Boston Scott against the Giants. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. Uh, but he did look he looked better uh, physically, certainly, than he did last week. Last week, he was sailing passes, wasn't stepping into throws against Seattle. To yesterday, he looked much improved. Uh, and Kyle Pitts was the big beneficiary. Darnell Mooney as well. I think he's just kind of locked in wide receiver two every week um, at this point. And so those two were the story. Disappointing day for Drake London. Uh, and then on the ground, uh, again, the 50-50 split between Bijan and Tyler Algier is back. Since week five, Kyle Pitts is the third best tight end in fantasy. He's now had four straight games with double digit fantasy points. There's like, there's a weirdly, there's a floor there. Just something to sort of point out. I wonder if he was maybe not feeling 100%. He played only 48% of the snaps. He had just a 61% uh, route participation, both season lows. Now, you don't care fantasy-wise because he had the big the plays. He had the two touchdowns as well. But it was just sort of kind of a weird one that all of a sudden uh, Pitts's production uh, – Pitts's usage was down. We talked about Mooney on fantasy football pregame about here's one of the guys that's like getting a ton of deep targets. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers give up a ton of deep targets. So uh, we expected this uh, from, I don't know that I expected wide receiver nine, but we talked about Mooney as somebody that we thought would be a good start. We also thought Detective Drake London would have a very good game here, and he did not. Just a bad day at the office for him. The ball just didn't go his way. I'm not worried about it. He'll be fine moving forward. Our, uh, on the Bucks side of things, Jay, Baker Mayfield, 50 pass attempts. He completes 37 of them, 330 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions. It's kind of a Jameis-esque game from Baker in a way. He's had a lot of turnover-worthy plays lately, but that doesn't matter in fantasy because he throws so much and Kate Otten keeps benefiting from that. Yeah, I mean, he has 21 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Right. Is, you know, some guys might end up with that for the whole season. He's played eight games. So I think Baker is just going to keep flinging it in this Liam Cohen offense that has a huge pass rate over expectation. Going into this, there was a lot of questions about who was going to be the wide receiver who really steps up in the absence of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. The answer is, don't really know, but Kate Otten's awesome and Kate Otten's going to be the number one guy. He's start Kate Otten yeah, like a that, wide receiver at this point. And as expected, they got the the running game going as well. It was a weird game. I, honestly, I, I think I think the Bucks kind of got jobbed here a little bit as well. I mean, one of the Kyle Pitts touchdowns, I think, with better replay. I mean, you've seen the play like Kyle yeah, Pitts kind of takes it Winfield. easy. Yep. Yeah, it comes and knocks it out. It feels like from the angle, it feels like a fumble, but they didn't have a goal. They didn't have a pylon cam feels like we should just one have a pylon cam and then two when in doubt comically you take the touchdown away from COVID. yeah yeah right. yeah exactly <laughs> right. for uh, so anyway i just but the creamsicle uniforms were awesome yes i uh, love seeing They're that great. and baker's going to continue to throw but i don't know we got any clarity in the passing game other than the fact that yes kate otten finishes the week as the number one tight end in fantasy he's now had at least one red zone target at six straight games he's got five games with 15 or more fantasy points and he, uh, in the games in which he has at least six targets, and he's going to get at least six targets a game for the foreseeable future. They're, um, they're at Kansas City next week. That'll be a tough matchup. Yep, and great call by me in the League of Arseholes, benching Kate Otten and Marvin Harrison Jr. for Jake Ferguson and Tyler Lockett. And uh, as yes. a result, I now need Russell Wilson to score 13 points tonight to win, which is right 50-50 whether he's going to get it. That is, uh, well, listen, I'm rooting against you. So I hope, <laughs> hope, Russell, Wilson, uh, I hope Russell Wilson gets 12.9 points tonight. Okay. That's what I hope. Yeah. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and Rotorworld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay, I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own Fantasy Football Happy Hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.